Imagine that you are a St. Paul police officer in 1854. As you are patrolling the streets, you are faced with an emergency and are forced to apprehend a criminal. You need backup, so you shout and blow your whistle, hoping that another officer hears you. Unfortunately, the nearest officer is over four blocks away, and your calls for help go unheard. Since the establishment of the St. Paul Police Department in 1854, its officers have refused to compromise the safety of the residents despite conflicts in communication technology. At first, police officers only communicated in person. This made communication over increasingly larger and more populated areas a conflict for the department. Throughout history, each new advancement in communication technology has allowed the department to better protect the community without compromising safety. The first documented police communications were in England. The officers used a hand bell or rattle to alert other officers that they needed help. Prior to that, the only way to communicate was a loud shout or whistle. Unfortunately, these forms of communication were only effective if officers were within hearing range of each other, compromising the safety of both the officer and the community. As the need to communicate became more important to maintain public safety, the St. Paul Police Department turned to new ways of communication to meet those needs. One new way used in 1885 was the call box. These boxes were placed strategically throughout the city. Inside was a telegraph with a device that looked like a clock with a bell on top. When the officer needed help, they would move the clock hands to one of many help topics. When they made their selection, they pulled the lever and a message was sent to the police station via wire, telling them the officer's status or request. The call box was a more reliable form of communication than the whistle or handbell, in that the officer was assured of being heard over greater distances as well as having their specific needs addressed. With the adoption of motorized patrol vehicles in 1912, a more portable form of communication was needed. The St. Paul Police Department got assistance in transmitting their calls from KSTP AM radio. KSTP would make one-way transmissions from their radio station, interrupting regular programming to announce a police call. This was helpful to the department in that they could send their call out to all of the squads at the same time, despite their location. One major conflict was the criminal could hear the call, giving them a warning that the police were on their way. In 1939, a radio transmitter was put on top of the first National Bank building in St. Paul, and all police cars were equipped with a two-way radio system. Soon after, handheld radios were made based on the portable pack radios from World War II. They were introduced to the department in 1957. Weighing five pounds and being the size of a brick, these radios were very bulky, but for the first time in St. Paul history, the availability of two-way communication was always near the officer. Dan Patch and Snelling with Papa Victor Uniform 905. Squad 121, squad's on scene. 
one two five twenty seven. At the turn of the 21st century, congested airwaves and the inability to communicate with outside agencies once again compromised the safety of the community and demonstrated a need for more efficient ways to communicate. With today's technology, the St. Paul Police Department has a new digital radio system that addresses those issues. It is the 800 megahertz radio. This radio system is run by computer at headquarters. It is much like a cell phone system in that it is digitally run. The chance of digital radio communication failing is less likely because of its many channels. If one channel goes down, the computer switches it to another. Thank you. 800 megahertz radio, um, the biggest improvement is it has allowed for the different agencies to communicate on an incident. For instance, if St. Paul Fire and St. Paul Police were on the same incident, same incident um, before the 800 megahertz, they couldn't talk um, to each other via the radio. Now with the 800 megahertz, it allows different agencies on the same incident to communicate via radio. The 800 megahertz radio system is being implemented in agencies all over Minnesota. This allows the St. Paul Police Department the ability to work with these agencies during a large-scale emergency situation. The most recent example of this was the 35W bridge collapse. When officers can't communicate due to congested airwaves, safety is once again compromised. Now, standard in most squad cars is a laptop computer. Instead of using the radio to call dispatch for information, officers now free up the airwaves by obtaining needed information through the computers in their squads. It started with um, the mobile data terminals. Basically, it was a big clunky computer in the car. The squads got their call information on where they needed to respond via this computer. It allowed for more ra um, radio time on the air, air time, um, and so squads could get on the air more often if they needed to and just receive their calls via the computers. Since the establishment of the St. Paul Police Department in 1854, its officers have refused to compromise the safety of the residents despite conflicts in communication technology. From rattles, to telegraphs, and from radio waves, to digital technology, the St. Paul Police Department is proud of maintaining its cutting-edge communication technology. This enables the department to better protect not only the community it serves, but its officers as well. Squad 125 traffic. Squad 125, go. Dan Patch and Snelling with Papa Victor uniform 905. Go for. Copy, that's 1247. 